good today. Hope you're all getting ready for Christmas. Stuart Damon is here. It's soap opera week. Stay with us if you like that. I hope you're, first of all, I hope your Christmas shopping is coming along well. This is here, the uh, first week in December is when this show is going to show. Hope it's coming along well. Get it done early. That's the main thing. As you've been watching, all this week we have people on from the soap operas. And today we have Dr. Quartermain, that mean guy who commits moral malpractice every day on General Hospital. Yes? Would you welcome, please, Stuart Damon. <laughs> Did you, did you hear that? Do you hear that reaction? Do you feel the chemistry in the room right now? Waited 20 years to hear that. <laughs> 20 Is that years. true? Do you find that your, as your face gets older that you're more appealing to women? Those yeah, are women. She, she's shaking her head, yeah. Is that, I don't know, I thought that, you know, when you get a reaction like this from people, you know, you say to yourself, God, where was it 15 or 20 years ago? And then... Maybe you weren't ready for Where were you? That's right, exactly. I mean, I was nowhere 15 years Do you know years. that women love to hate you? I know. Right? <laughs> Cruel, aren't I? Rotten to the core. She deserves it. She's no good. She's rotten. I give her what for, everyone. I'm, I, I Do you like that? Do you enjoy the fact that, they, that there's a reaction? Just any reaction at all would be good, wouldn't it? But women love to hate you. Um, you are you the epitome of a, of a male uh, chauvinist? bad guy well he's very well bred you know character so there are certain things that are correct and certain things that are incorrect and one of the things that he feels was incorrect was her going and making love to somebody else and then make him believe it was his baby he didn't like that at all well, i wouldn't like that either well neither would i so therefore do you like that a little bit of no a little, a little torture for her will but... she do it again next month yeah. yes <laughs> Just... so much but you know the soap operas you guys here i've seen bed scenes on in the daytime that i i have trouble eating my lunch i gotta tell you something i gotta tell you something i did one love scene one bed scene yeah where it was so r-rated they had to edit it really? how r-rated was, was it, it? They cut from the preliminaries to the end. They couldn't handle all the stuff in between. Really? Yeah, honest to God. I won't ask what you got into. I mean, it's, hey, what, should we know? Well, you see, I was drunk at the time, so it was really, it was pretty, uh, you know, for Does your wife people. watch those scenes? Doesn't she get jealous? She doesn't watch very much. I don't know, I'm getting undressed here. She doesn't watch an awful lot because, you know, she's got her own thing to do. But when she watches, she doesn't get jealous. She doesn't. To her, it's a business proposition. The more successful I am, the more stuff I can buy for her. <laughs> Good way to look at it. I mean, we worked together, and I was rolling around on the stage, you know, yeah. with, with, a, with the leading lady, you know, making all kinds of love to her, and making believe, all kinds of... And she was sitting there knitting, like Madame Defarge, you know. With gold thread that she bought from the, the show that correct. you had. Correct, correct. Okay, let's go to a different area. You, when, do you mind that now that you have the soap opera and you're a household word, when Stuart Damon goes into a store, a restaurant, and you're treated special, D does that does that bug you because it does me sometimes i i don't know why that is but people feel like they know you and so they would wait on you first and in, in, in place of somebody else well it's a privilege that you don't deserve number one because right. you're just a customer and you're paying exactly the same price yeah and so i i think that that's wrong and i think it's unjust and it really makes me crazy the same way it does you but it does happen doesn't it it does happen but there are some times when being who you are and being as visible as you are works for just causes. I'm, I mean, it happened with me not too long ago when I got ripped off, you know, trying to build a pool, which is happening all the time. This kind of thing, people have to stand up because, you know, the way I really feel about it is, you know, as us being visible about this sort of thing, you have a wonderful job and I'm doing well now. And it's okay for us, you know, it isn't okay. It's terrible. I mean, I was furious, but... Did he know, take advantage of you because you're a no, 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 no. I mean, I wasn't singled out because of that. I mean, he had 20 other people lined up. But, I see. Uh, so you were able to put it on the air and do something about it because of your position. That's exactly, and that's, yeah. and, that's, and that's the best part of but it. But there are a lot of consumer advocate places where anybody can call in and say, hey, this guy took me for a, a trip. Yeah. You know, a lot, anybody can do that now. Maybe you could do it a little more powerfully because it was Stuart Damon. And they, yeah, and so that's yeah. good. I mean, I've got a mechanic's lien sitting in my pocket now from somebody else that he didn't pay that I just got in the mail this afternoon. 
You know, so I pay, and that's an archaic law. And, and again, you know, people should be made aware of this, you know, to change that. You know, why should we be made to pay twice? You know, and yeah. yet, it's a bad reflection, you know, on people who are good at their job. I mean, I got an outfit, you know, that came in to finish the job off called Landon Crane, who was sensational and who were gentlemen, yeah. you know. And yeah. it's bad for everybody, but yeah. that's when it's good to be in a so position. So the job is finished, your kids are swimming in the pool. Yeah. Your, kids, you, your kids are wild. You have, you have, is it a, you have a daughter, 18, and a son, four. <laughs> now that's, you're not going to say I forgot for 14 years, right? No, you're not no, gonna I'm sure you knew up. how. No, no, I knew how, but uh, he was an accident. He was an, he was not planned. He is the happiest accident. Oh, the what world. a nice surprise, though. Is that a face? That's a face. Is that a face? That's the pride and joy of my life, that is. Did you learn how to raise children on the 18-year-old that you're doing differently now with him? Are you raising him differently than you did your daughter? Yeah, I'm a better father for him than I was. I wasn't... How so? Time. I wasn't a good father. I, I, I say that to her myself. But I, you had more time then than you do now. <sighs> but you're young and you're selfish and you're immature and, uh, and you don't have the commitment to having brought someone into this world that didn't ask to be brought here. And then it's your responsibility then after that. And I wasn't good. as good a father to her as I am for my son now, and I'm, I'm doing the best job that I can, and I'm still going to make mistakes, but I'm trying a lot harder. Yeah, there's no school for how to be a good parent. No, and no matter what you do, you're going to be wrong in the end, because we all grow up and something's not right, you know, yeah. and, but the one thing you can't do, you can't walk around, you can't lay it on your parents, you know, all the time. You've got to stand up uh, once in a while and say, hey, this is my life, you know, I better get on with it, too. Right. Okay, everybody watching in has felt this. I think so many parents feel, I've made a mistake with this son or this daughter. I wish that I had that. How can you fix at 18 now with your daughter? Let's say you didn't play softball enough with her. Let's say you didn't get her into sports because she was a girl and maybe you wanted a boy. Yeah. Can you fix anything now? It's hard because especially at 18, between 16 and 17, they say it gets better, you know. Yeah. It's getting better, but it was pretty bad, you know, before. But nothing uh, is forever. You can, you can, your relationship with your you kids... Gotta, you just got to keep trying out. and hope that between yeah. you trying and between the child growing up and gaining more maturity and saying this is what the whole ball game's about, yeah. that you redevelop a relationship, you know, that... Yeah. Uh, I know many of us don't like to sit down and read a book, but there are great books out now on how to raise children. Uh, I should make a list and recommend them to people because they've helped me a lot and I'm still wallowing as you are. Stuart, thank you for being with us.